Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. So in this video, I wanna talk about some things that I wish that I knew before I built my first Ethereum DAP. So before we get into that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. And also, if you're interested in learning how to build blockchain technology, you can download my courses for free on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash free download. So let's talk about some things that I wish that I knew before I built my first Ethereum DAP. And I wanna make this video because I'm actually in the middle of working on a project that was particularly challenging. And a lot of these things kind of came to mind as I was making it. So I wanted to do this video for you all. And this video is really designed to kind of give you some ideas about some things that you might encounter when you're actually building production dApps. You know, when you're trying to sort of graduate from doing tutorials to, you know, actually building something that's going to get deployed to the blockchain. Um, because there's a lot of gotchas right now with uh, some of this technology when you're trying to make that initial leap. So I wanna share this with you all and hope you all get some value out of it. So the first tip is to develop your dApp in layers. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, it's easy, you know, if you're just doing tutorials to think about, you know, building your dApp as just building a smart contract. And I guess that's true, you know, once you've built a smart contract and put it on a blockchain, um, you have built a decentralized application or a distributed application, you've built a dApp. Um, you know, and you could just interact with that smart contract with any Ethereum wallet, right? You could just call its functions and you would have a dApp on the blockchain. And you know you might take that a step further and say you know I'll just develop a client side application to talk to this smart contract and there you go I've got a DAP, um, and that would be two layers. But really most industrial strength DAPs right now need multiple layers. You need more than just a smart contract usually, and more than just you know a client side application that talks you know directly to the smart contract. There's usually more application state involved. Usually need to store data off chain about the DAP. Um, that you know your users don't care about you know being off the blockchain or on the blockchain, right? And that kind of ties into this is you know you don't necessarily need to use the blockchain for everything, right? And you can, that can be its own layer, and the smart contract can be its own layer, and your client side application can be its own layer, and you can have you know like a microservice or something like that that runs other parts of your application. And this is really a trend through a lot of you know web development is to kind of make things into little microservices and different you know services that all talk to one another that are specialized and do exactly you know the job that they're supposed to. And building DApps is very similar. Okay, so point number two builds off point number one, which is you really want to keep the layers of your DApp separate. Okay, and that's kind of where I was finishing with point one, but. You want to keep these actually in separate projects. You can do this a few different ways um, where, you know, real pro dApps, you're probably gonna have a UI that has, you know, a lot of files. You know, you might be using something like React.js to build your client side application. And if you've ever built a big React project before, you know, that can have, you know, dozens of components, if not hundreds of components, um, all nested in a huge tree. And if that project gets big, it really needs to be on its own somewhere else, right? And if you have a complex, you know, smart contract infrastructure, that really needs to be in its own project somewhere else, right? And you keep those things separately. And you can actually gain some advantages in, by developing these things independently. So if you you know, are working with a team, you can have a team that's devoted to, you know, just working on the UI, separately the smart contract. You don't always have to have, you know, one done before the other. I've worked on projects where you can basically, you know, just fake all the calls to the smart contract while you're developing the client side application and work on the smart contract independently. Or, you know, you can basically get the smart, if you're just working on a project by yourself, sometimes I like to do this where, you know, we just get the smart contract uh, done exactly how we want it to, and then we pull that into our other project and then just use that, right? And maybe make some updates later if we find things we need to change. So you really wanna keep those separate. And, you know, for the other things that I talked about, you know, other application concerns like storing data off chain. So I'll give you an example. Like if you're gonna build a decentralized exchange, you might wanna keep an order book that's off chain, right? Just you know, a list of who is making intents to trade, because that can be very fast. So a good example would be to actually build a microservice for this, right? And I'm, I've been doing this a lot more lately, where basically I will build a microservice that handles all of the blockchain transactions 
And other parts of the application will simply talk to this microservice, like an API, basically. Uh, it'll have a unique token that won't let, it won't be a public API. No one else can access it. But this is what I started doing. So, you know, if you had a project where um, you, especially if you want to manage user wallets and funds and things like that, I like keeping that in its own warehouse, its own separate silo that other parts of the application have the ability to talk to. And especially if you know ever paying gas costs or anything like that, if you wanna have an application account, um, you can keep all that in this silo and just talk to it and make all your blockchain transactions on behalf of your app in one central location. So that's another example of keeping the layers of your dApp separate. The point number three is that not all networks are created equal. Not all blockchain networks are created equally. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you've been doing tutorials um, or you're building your own dApp and you've just been developing it locally, you might notice that some things change as you, you know, move it to a test network or you move it to the main Ethereum network, right? These things don't all work the same. So I'll explain why. So if you're building a dApp and you're using a, a local blockchain, a personal blockchain, um, a lot of times you're using basically a an, a, job, a JavaScript version of a blockchain or a, a blockchain that runs in, inside memory. It doesn't work like a full blockchain. So if you've used Ganache or you know, Remix or something like that, uh, all those you know, personal blockchains, they, have, they don't have the same behavior that a public blockchain would. So you might find that things change whenever you move from a personal blockchain to a test network, say. So maybe like the Kovan test network or the Robson test network or something like that. Um, you might notice that some parts of your smart contract don't behave the exact same way. So you always wanna check through every network, right? One strategy is to actually run your tests against a test network. So if you're using like the Truffle test runner, um, you can actually point your tests to a test network and run them on the public blockchain. So, there are also many other gotchas when you're going to the main network. And thankfully, it's gotten easier to deploy smart contracts to the main network. I think I did some videos about that, deploying smart contracts to the main network with Truffle version 5. Um, we used to have an issue where basically all your deployments would time out because Web3.js had basically a limit where it would stop trying after a certain amount of time and it would usually time out because the block time was too long. So the tools have gotten better and moving to the mainnet has gotten easier, but there's still lots of concerns that you need to think about before you actually put your smart contracts on the mainnet. So point number four, what else do I wish that I knew? So point number four would be that, you know, interfacing with the blockchain is hard and it can be really tricky to know whether or not you actually need an Ethereum node. Do you need to run a, your Ethereum node? I guess it's a question that I wish I would ask myself and which I had some insight on when I was building my first dApp. So I guess you need to ask why do you need to connect to the blockchain and how? So if you're building a blockchain where you know, your users are primarily just connecting to it and interacting with smart contracts that you've built and put on the blockchain, then you, know, you may not need to, right? They might be able to just connect with MetaMask and you know, point to their own Ethereum node. If they're using MetaMask, they're connecting with Infura. Or maybe they're using their own Ethereum node. Um, so I know, I mean, if you're deploying your smart contracts to the blockchain, you need access to an Ethereum node of some kind, but you may not actually need to run one, like running and maintaining one can be very hard. So you may be able to just use a service like Infura or a quick node or something like that. Um, or you can have Ethereum node as a service, right? And yeah, it's really hard to run your own Ethereum node, but sometimes it is necessary. So if you're, you know, DAP relies on keeping a lot of blockchain data in sync to where you can access it faster. Like sometimes people will be pulling in blockchain data and like caching it inside their own database so they have quick access to it because sometimes it can be slow reading data from the blockchain and doing aggregations and things like that. Sometimes you want to like either mine the data from the blockchain or, you know, just make big queries that is hard to do if you're just talking directly to the blockchain. So sometimes you might need it and you need to determine that, um, but just know ahead of time that running your own node is hard and keeping it in sync is hard. Um, and you know, really integrating into your application has a lot of gotchas. So that's all I got for today, guys. Hope you all liked this video. Again, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. 
And also, if you're interested in learning how to build blockchain technology, you can download my courses for free on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash free download. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.